Egypt has a rich history in all aspects of life. Since the dawn of humanity, Egyptian civilization rose over the others. This civilization had a hierarchical society and system of government. They were able to come up with a complex system of writing, art and incredible pieces of architecture. This complex civilization gave origin to many things that we still admire and study today. One such thing is the mythology and religion of the ancient Egyptian culture. Myths are used to explain the world in which we live in, and the origins of the various things in it. In ancient Egyptian culture, people worship Ra as their creator. The myth says that in the beginning there was only one infinite ocean, none, which contained all the elements of the universe. There was neither heaven nor earth, and men were not yet born. There was no life or death. The spirit of the world was dispersed in chaos, until it became aware of itself, so the god Ra was born. Ra was all-powerful, and he could take many forms. His power and the secret of it laid in his ability to create other gods by saying their names. But if he spoke other names, it would come into being. He named Shu, and the first winds blew. He named Tepnut, and the first rain fell. Then he raised an island where he could rest. He called it Egypt, and as he arose from the waters, he would live by water. So the Nile River was born. Ra began creating animals and plants from none. Meanwhile, Shu and Tefnut had two kids, whom they called Geb and Nut, who created earth and heaven. Geb and Nut got married. Thus, the sky lay on the earth, copulating with it. Shu, jealous, cursed and separated them, holding the sky on his head and holding the earth with his feet. Still, he could not prevent Nod from having daughters, the stars. Ra had sent one of his eyes to look for Shu and Tefnut, but when he returned, another eye had taken its place. The first eye began to weep, until Ra placed it on his forehead, creating the sun. From the tears of the first eye were born men and women, who dwelt in Egypt and every morning Ra raced across the sky in a boat that floated over Nan, transporting the sun. Each night Nan swallowed it, and Ra continued his journey through hell. If he passed through, he was born again from Nan, giving rise to a new day. Ra, the one creator, became visible to all the people of Egypt in the form of a solar disk, but was also known under many other forms. He was able to appear as a crowned man, like a hawk or a hawk-headed man. And just as the beetle pushes the balls of excrement, the Egyptians represented Ra like a beetle pushing the sun across the sky. In Egypt, holidays and celebrations go hand in hand with religion. There are lots of them. The first one is Maulidu en Nabi, or Birth of the Prophet or simply called Maulid in colloquial Arabic. This is one of the most celebrated holidays in Islamic countries, such as Egypt, in which people honor the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad. It is celebrated during the third month in the Islamic calendar, and as the calendar is a lunar one, the date varies from year to year, and also between different Muslim groups, such as Shias and Sunnis. During this period, Decorations are put on all over the cities and villages in which this festivity is celebrated, featuring tents in which sweets and candies are handed out. Also, many devotional songs are played in honor of the great Prophet Muhammad. The second one is Ramadan, or the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, in which Muslims, except those who are suffering from illness, traveling, are elderly, pregnant, breastfeeding, diabetic, or going through menstrual bleeding, Refrain from eating, drinking, smoking, and engaging in sexual relations during daylight hours. All of this to commemorate the first revelation of the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad. The main activities that are held during this period are reading the Quran and praying. When the Ramadan ends, a massive festival commonly known as Eid al-Fitr 
takes place to celebrate the end of the fasting, in which family gatherings and feasts occur. Another important celebration in Egypt is the Islamic New Year, and as its name says, it is the day that marks the beginning of a new year in the Islamic calendar. For many Muslims, this festivity represents a period for self-reflection and historical awareness. In what religion is concerned, Egypt is a majority Muslim country, in which 90% of the population is Muslim, with most of them being Sunnis. The other 10% consists basically of Christian minorities, of which the majority are members of the Coptic Church. The demographic dominance of Islam has profoundly affected traditions and the daily lives of Egyptians. The religion of Islam has serious stipulations and rules on how Muslims should conduct themselves in daily life and the path their life must take in order to please Allah. Religion is a very important part of the daily life of Egyptians. However, Egyptians are also very superstitious. They won't receive compliments happily as they believe that they hide envy and that they are actually curses done by the evil eye. Because of this, Egyptians will usually compliment something and then say Masha Allah, asking Allah for protection of that thing. Muslims must pray five times a day according to their religion. That is the second pillar of Islam, Salat. And so the Adhan, or call to prayer, is heard in Egypt all throughout the day. Islam is a notoriously conservative religion, and so Egypt is more conservative than most Western countries. However, in comparison to other Arab countries, they are very liberal. Egyptians have very strong family values and are very conservative in this sense. People are expected to live in their parents' houses until they marry and live to make their own family. Family values in Egypt dictate that young people should respect their elders and that women should respect and defer to men. In a typical Egyptian family, the husband would be the worker, providing for his family, while the female should do all domestic work, as well as caring for children. According to Islam, mothers should breastfeed their children for two years, a tradition that is upheld in Egyptian culture. In the usual Egyptian household, women have little effective power, but they manage to influence the decisions that the man ultimately takes, as he has the final say. Arranged marriages are very common. The legal age of marriage was increased to 18 in 2008, and after the Egyptian revolution in 2011, conservative forces in the new government wanted to reduce the minimum age of marriage for girls. Luckily, thanks to the mobilization of the National Council for Women and other groups, these proposals weren't carried out. According to a study conducted by UNICEF in 2016, 17% of girls in Egypt are married before their 18th birthday, and 2% is married before they reach 15. Child marriage usually occurs in poorer rural areas, and it is actually rising in some locations. In terms of clothing, Islam dictates that both men and women should dress modestly and conservatively. This applies more to women than men and usually implies the use of a headscarf to cover the woman's hair or complete face. Men should not wear short trousers or shirts without sleeves. This, however, is not so deeply rooted in culture as our traditions are and, because of this, people are able to dress how they want. Women's rights in Egypt have always been poor. However, they are now, more than ever, a contentious issue. The statistics show a desolating picture. More than 99% of Egyptian women have reported to having suffered sexual harassment once or more in their life. An even more abhorrent fact is that 97% of Egyptian girls have suffered female genital mutilation of some sort. This problem is also determined by socioeconomic status. While it is reported by the World Health Organization that 61.7% of girls in rural schools are affected by this brutal practice, only 9.2% of girls in private urban schools suffer from this. Another completely unrelated topic that is also determined by socioeconomic status is language. The primary language of Egyptians is Arabic, the official language of the state. 
However, there is also a high number of English and French speakers in the upper class. And speaking of classes, although Egypt has left the caste system buried in the past, social inequality and the gap between the richest and the poorest is increasing. The gap is filled with an expanding and generally well-off middle class. The difference between rural and urban populations is noticeable, with each having a very distinct set of traditions. Discrimination is a big part of social norms in rural society. Generally, someone of higher economic status will not attend an invitation to someone's house if they are perceived as of lesser wealth. In these circles, cordiality is characterized as the wealthiest person providing hospitality to the poorest person. The protocol for invitations dictates that one must first decline the invitation to someone's house before accepting if they were to invite again, as this will show respect for the host and that they really want to have that person in their home. If someone cannot send an invitation, they must promise to visit at another time. On the other hand, when someone accepts an invitation, they are morally obligated to attend, as doing otherwise would be deeply humiliating for the host. The issue of wealth and respect, and the relationship between these two, is deeply rooted in Egyptian society. For example, tipping someone that has helped you is a custom. The tipping, however, has a few rules. First. Tipping should be done to someone of lower socioeconomic status, as tipping someone of your same or higher socioeconomic status is very offensive. Secondly, the tip should be a considerable amount, because tipping too little is offensive as well. When trying to thank someone of the same or higher socioeconomic status, the custom is to give them a gift. This gift however, must be in accordance with this person's socioeconomic status. Now, going back to Islam, it has had a good impact in Egyptian society, at least when speaking of making Egyptians very charitable. Obligatory charity is the third pillar of Islam, it is called zakat, and seen as a form of self-purification. Because of this, a lot of non-governmental charities thrive in Egypt where poverty and low pensions are a serious issue. Egyptian cuisine is a very distinguishable part of Egyptian culture. It relies heavily on legumes and vegetables, and most dishes are prepared with this. Some foods have been found to be more than 5,000 years old, having changed with time, adding different ingredients and adapting to different styles. As Egypt is a Muslim majority country, the consumption of pork is basically non-existent, and that ingredient is not present in any of Egypt's traditional dishes. Meat is also very scarce as an ingredient in traditional foods, as it is very expensive, and most people can't afford it. As a show of status, wealthy families consume meat daily, while middle classes do it once a week or month. Another subject in which Egypt has also cultivated a rich tradition is sports. Nowadays, they mostly center on football, their most popular sport. El Ali and Del Samale clubs count with huge followings all over Africa. Egypt also had a history with weightlifting, wrestling and boxing, earning several Olympic and international medals in these disciplines. Furthermore, navigating the Nile with the ancient Egyptian expert robots. It should also be pointed out that sports clubs receive financial aid from the government. Egypt is also considered a powerhouse of cinema in the Arab world. The biggest studio of the Arab world is Mediner El Entak El Elami Studios, located in Cairo. The content they produce goes from cheesy soap operas to critically beloved films. The film industry in Egypt went through a boom during and after the Second World War, due to the difficulty to acquire American and European films. Some of the Egyptian films that are considered treasures to them are El Haram, Shai Men El Kauf, El Bustaji, El Nasser Salah El Din, and Al Mumia, all premiered during the 1960s. 
of the more than 4,000 films made in Arabic-speaking countries since 1908, more than three quarters were Egyptian. Finally, it should be said that dance has played a very important role in Egyptian culture. Dancing can be seen in ancient paintings and sculptures of the pharaonic period. Many dances have found ground for practice in Egypt. Some of these include ancient Egyptian dance, folklore dance, and belly dance. With the rise of conservatism due to Islam in Egypt, belly dance has seen its reputation tarnished, being seen now as a vulgar and provocative dance. So, in conclusion, as we've seen, Egypt is a country with a strong cultural backbone, an ancient civilization admired today that has given rise to an interesting yet unimpressive and flawed present. With treatment of women as second-class citizens, a conservative culture, deeply classist traditions, and political suppression and instability.